Alright guys, welcome to another beer review. Um, it's a beer that I reviewed um, before and it's a beer that I've drank multiple times but I'm drinking it out of a new format. So uh, we've got Magic Rocks Common Grounds which is a wonderful coffee porter clocking in at 5.4% ABV brewed in collaboration with Darkwoods Coffee or at least using Darkwoods Coffee and then uh, what you're seeing behind me is um, the starts of a, a makeshift bar that we've started in the garden. So we just sourced some pallets, we've got some wood on the other side which was sourced earlier today and it, it's going to be, you know, it's not going to be like the most illustrious um, garden bar. Um, although we did buy a, um, what are they called? I can't remember what they're called, but gazebo. So we bought a gazebo to put over to cover it. And uh, it's going to be really sort of basic. Um, maybe as the months and weeks go on, we might try and get some sort of like tap system in. Uh, even if it means we have to, you know, get an extension lead for them, use it to have like a beer fridge or something like that. But I thought it would be a perfect backdrop. So it's a work in progress and it is uh, quite crude, but um, it, it's, it's coming along nicely actually. And it's cost us nothing, um, basically. The pallets were from a local shop, and uh, we've, well, my brother, who's done most of this, it's his idea, and fair play to him. Uh, he managed to source some light planks of wood to put on the front, um, just so it doesn't look like it's just pallets <laughs> together. So it's gonna have a little bit of a trailer park boys, you know, rustic vibe to it. Uh, these are gothic, would they be classed as gothic statues or busts? They're more like Greek, aren't they? I'm not sure who they're busts of, but they're famous busts, not, you know, none the same. Not famous busts like uh, Katie Price, but uh, the only reason why I say Katie Price because uh, we were talking about Katie Price earlier. Uh, but not in a derogatory way, like Frankie Boyle would. Anyway, so yeah, it's a, it's a nice backdrop, actually. And then the fence that you're sat on is the fence that the wind usually blows, blows my phone off. I've had a few beers already, so. In fact, I've already got a beer on the go. Um, juice box from Porpio. So my palate's not exactly pure at the moment. And one thing I will say is, because we don't really have uh, the refrigeration um, in place for even the mini keg, what I've had to do is I've covered it in like a, a really cold, wet towel and put it in a freezer bag. And then um, on the outside of the towels, I've put um, a couple of um, you know uh, freezable blocks. So it's not going to be the most perfect condition. Uh, I'll give you that. Um, and I am doing this at quarter past eight in the evening. So what a perfect time to start a coffee porter. So hopefully, because I won't drink it all tonight, even though I've got a, a stream coming up. Um, hopefully it will be okay to drink tomorrow so we we had um a pale ale um and you've got beautiful bird song it's a gorgeous evening absolutely gorgeous um and we had a pale ale uh, from uh magic rocks so they were doing um a limited run of uh mini kegs so i thought common grounds have to pick it up and yeah that was okay it wasn't kept well um to be honest throughout the day but it was still tasting good the carbonation was all right and it had a really sort of like cask pale ale vibe about it which slowly coming to appreciate a good cask beer um, but yeah this is actually quite a nice backdrop that i've got even though the statues are facing the other way anyway so should we get this opened and i made the mistake which i knew i i know how to use a mini keg but I accidentally took the top off the other one so we had to like stick it back down and then put it back into like a cool environment so it wasn't kept the best but it was still tasting really good but then again it was me and my younger brother and we demolished it in you know half a day so this is going to be tested a little bit more and I know it's not the most ideal way but um, I am going to be seeing if I can pick up like a cheap fridge unit just enough to to hold a keg or two because it's it's a good way to to drink beer especially when we're having gorgeous weather like this in the lockdown so uh, yeah anyway wordy introduction over let's get this sorted so just come on to the out and just twist here there we go 
So yeah, Common Ground's one of my all-time favourite beers. I'm trying to not wobble it too much because the, the bar isn't secure yet. As you can clearly see. So, let's give this a shot. Is that fully out? That's what she said. Okay, why are you not coming out? Bear me one second, folks. Of course, this would happen. Didn't turn it around fully enough. There we go. Yeah, bear with me, ladies and gentlemen. So, not a bad pour after the minor technical difficulties there. But yeah, beer in a glass then. And it's got a really sort of like dark matte oak look to it. Matte oak, it sounds like a person, I'm sure he exists. And then two fingers worth of a slightly pale beige looking head, looking nice in the glass. So let's see what we get on the nose. Oh yes. It's that medley of nice, sweet, roasted malts with an ever so slight hint of coffee, but the more I sniff it, and the more that it's actually in the glass, the more that coffee character comes through. It's such a good quality coffee uh, from Darkwoods. I'll have to buy from them directly because I need to buy some more coffee beans. But it's just so nice. It's got that sort of like milky chocolate character with a little bit of dark chocolate, like a dark, slightly scorched chocolate cake that you've left in the, the oven too, just a tad bit too long. <sighs> it smells nice. It's actually nice and uh, cool. Although, this beer's not going to suffer when it gets a little bit warmer. As I said, I'm just more worried about it, how it's going to survive overnight. But the nights have been quite cold, um, to be honest. <sighs> but it's smelling good. It's got that familiar common grounds aroma. And now the coffee's really shining. Anyway, shall we get it drank and reviewed? Let's do it. Cheers. Clumsy. Absolutely clumsy. That's good. The great thing about common grounds that I find is that it's not like too in your face in any sort of um, in any sort of flavour profile. It's the balance of the beer. It's got a lovely, slightly semi-skimmed milk sort of mouthfeel. I mean, I'm, I'm sure this isn't going to taste too dissimilar and feel too dissimilar as like um, a canned version. I mean, I think the, the ultimate way that I've had common ground has been when it's been on like a proper cask. Untouchable. I mean, it's untouchable as it is. So this isn't really a review because I've reviewed it uh, before. Even like the Kentucky Grounds, which is like a bit of a more amplified version. It's just been beautiful. And this is no exception. This is tasting absolutely fantastic. Brewery fresh as well. It's like about three or four days since I've um, received the cat, uh, the mini keg. A little bit of a common grounds puddle on the floor. Oh, I'm going to drink way too much of this tonight. It's just so easy drinking. If you love your coffee, you're going to love this. It's got that sort of like slightly creamy ever so slight milky coffee, almost like you've used oat milk in a coffee or something like that. 
and you've not added too much uh, sweetness in terms of sugar or sweetener. It's just a beautiful beer. Um, it's absolutely gorgeous. One of my all-time favourite beers. It really, really is. And it's it's like a really sort of key um, example in the UK industry. I know people tend to not like Magic Rock because of the whole buyout situation and yada, yada, yada. But from the beers that I've had since that time, I've really yet to be disappointed by Magic Rock. And I've not noticed a dip in their quality at all. Um, the only time I've ever noticed it if it was like a can that's been on the shelf for a bit too long. Although that being said, I've not had too many sort of um, newer releases from Magic Rock because you don't really see too many stockists supplying them. But you know, you've got this, you've got Dark Arts, you've got um, High Wire, you know, you've got High Wire Grapefruit, um, you've got Sorcery. You know, Magic Rock, they've been absolutely nailed that core range, do you know what I mean? And if you're ever lucky enough, or have been lucky enough to go to the, the tap room, you know, one of the real pioneers in bringing that American tap room aesthetic and atmosphere to the UK. So no matter what you think about their sort of like financial and, you know, standings in that regard, you can't deny that Magic Rock don't know how to, they know how to brew a really good beer. And uh, this is just no exception. This is an absolute dream. I've got five litres of it. So um, hopefully my brother doesn't like this as much as he liked that pale ale that I got, which I think was uh, Stew's The Boss now or something like that. Uh, it was a collaboration that they'd done with another northern brewery whose name I've completely forgotten. I didn't do a review of that one because that was just like a, a day drinking beer that I bought for me and my brother. But yeah, whether it's your breakfast beer, whether it's, you, you know, your, your nightcap, I could just drink this beer all day. I really, really could. Absolutely gorgeous. And I think, Paige, you're going to be on YouTube. Yeah. Well, probably not because I'm so fat and I cover most of the screen, but yeah, that, that was my uh, my mother. Um, yeah, this is this is an absolute knockout. And it just tastes like I want it to. And the fact that I've got five litres of this for about 23 quid. Because uh, I, I don't really get to get common grounds, especially with the lockdown. The, the nearest place I can get common grounds is from a local booths. But it's a bit of a journey to get there um, when you're not in a car and when you're not in a pandemic. And it's like ridiculously cheap. So I think I've got my, my money's worth with this and um, it's not going to last long. Do I need to worry about keeping this overnight? Probably not. Um, realistically, yes, because I am worried about it. I don't want it to spoil because that would be an absolute travesty. But um, yeah, considering I've got no like beer fridge or kegerator or anything like that to uh, keep this. It's tasting really good a few days down the line since receiving it. So um, yeah, is this better than the can? Is this better than draft? Is this better than yada yada yada? Um, I'd have to have each one in front of me. What a dream that would be. Um, but I think my best iteration of Common Grounds was when I had it on cask in um, Port Port Street Beer House in Manchester. Although I remember me and Rob from uh, when we were at Indie Man together, Rob from Hopsy, um, we had a really gorgeous version of it at Indie Man. And I can't remember if that was like a just a regular sort of cask version of it, but it was still evil. No matter what version you get to try, Common Grounds is an absolute masterpiece, in my opinion. And um, yeah. It's absolutely gorgeous. I'm going to be fucking wired tonight. So yeah, I'm going to take this cask straight to the bedroom, unplug the hole, and plug it back in again. No, I'm not because I'm I don't fetishize casks and kegs. I'm sorry. 
there are some people out there who'd love to see that on my OnlyFans account, but who knows, if I get enough subscribers, I'll put, I won't say that. I was going to say I'd mm, anything, but I don't want to derail this review. Anyway, so aside from the, the awkward little failure that I had because I didn't let enough pressure out before I could uh, pour it, beautiful beer, 10 out of 10 all day of the week. Beautiful beer, love it, magic rock, this a masterpiece. And um, yeah, I'm going to enjoy the rest of this. So uh, if you want to see my other reviews of this, I'll try and remember to put them in the link down below. Definitely my top five beers of all time. And the beer that really sort of cemented my love for coffee in beer. Which is, uh, it's important to me, it means absolutely fuck all to you. But I appreciate it. I love you guys for watching. But um, yeah, I'm going to enjoy the rest of this. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I shall hopefully see you later. Now you're going to watch me awkwardly walk towards the camera and turn the camera off.